Everything has spirit because we're all naturally animist. Whether you want to accept it or not, we always know that everything is spirit. You can make believe it isn't, but you know, even in physics, everything is energy. Energy, spirit, the same difference, it doesn't matter. I grew up in an Italian ghetto in New York City. And, um, you know, it was kind of like mob control and how do you ever see a cop unless they're invited in. But it was also my first introduction to tribal culture because um, it pretty much functioned like a tribe. We were in our neighborhood. Um, when the grandmothers were out on the port, or out on the stoops, they made sure everybody was cool. Everyone always listened to the grandmothers. So yeah, I grew up in the city. I did have um, two friends that introduced me to nature, though. One was a tree and one was a cat. And so I'd talk to my tree, right, and we'd communicate. But one day I, I wanted to touch the sky. Because you're a kid, you don't know that you can't touch the sky. You want to touch the sky. So I said to my tree friend, I'm going to go touch the sky. And my tree friend kept on saying, you can't touch the sky. You're going to fall and die. I said, no, I'm going to touch the sky. You're going to help me. And so I kept on climbing and climbing and climbing. The branches got smaller and smaller. I said, I can't hold you. The tree kept on saying, I can't hold you. And I said, no, I'm going to touch the sky. So I kept on climbing. Climbing and climbing and sure enough, my tree friend couldn't hold me. I came tumbling down, 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 right into my grandmother's arms, who was watching from the kitchen, saying, he can't go that high. <laughs> I um, started to do vision quests and do a bunch of little mystical things of sorts. And when I had those visions, I seen our changing times, these times that we're in now. I wanted to know what people can do to make it through these times. And I found that people have survived major catastrophes in the past by living underground. Well, Sid is a subterranean indigenous domicile. The Sid's designed to be invisible. It's designed to be warm. It's designed to withstand uh, any natural disaster and a few people made disasters. You don't have to live underground. It's really just a shelter. Even if we have a nuclear holocaust, believe it or not, you don't have to live underground all the time. This is a misconception. You just need that shelter for when things get tough or for when there's people roaming around looking for taking advantage of other people. You need some place to hide away. This, this land itself is the perfect land for building such a structure. I haven't seen anything more perfect than this. I tried three other places and they were not as good. Too clay, not enough stone. The drainage here is real good. You don't have to worry about the drainage. You have all the materials you need here. This is an ideal situation here. Okay. One evening, I heard the coyotes howling and doing their thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I heard a dog howling and doing its thing with the coyotes, right? Mm -hmm. But distant from it. And so I started howling too. And then in a little while, I heard the dog go, oh, oh, oh. I said, oh, I better stop howling. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I think the dog was dead in. <laughs> we here. This is a location of about six SIDS or five SIDS. Where were you at in this one? Six years ago, maybe? And it just fell apart really last year. Can you tell me a little bit about it? About the construction that we see here? Well, it's um, obviously stone on the bottom, but then you got timber frame, but only knee high. Then after that, we have bent saplings that then hold on the shingles. The shingles are held on by bent saplings. They use some geodesic dome principles. Some, you see some triangles there. So that's part of the reason it held up all these years. The fireplace was a funnel design which could go, go below the draft line because it has jet action. So it shoots it up. So you don't have to worry about the uh, draft line so you can build closer and lower. Got two other structures to show you. Not one, but two. Well, that's the uh, set. It's covered with plastic right now. And uh, yeah, you can see the fireplace over here. This is the bypass right here. And this is where the channel comes out. So it goes like this. It's going to go like this. It's only one channel, two channels now. That's the channel, that's the, fire, that's the bypass. It was actually a little deeper than this is now. 
Um, the digging alone took probably 10 days. The roof is actually going to be a very thick layer of bark, starting with birch bark, which is very good for underground building and for resistance to mold and stuff. And then all other barks on top of that. Probably about three, four inches of birch bark and then those six inches of other bark. And then you cover it with the dirt and then you cover it with the sod. And it'll be totally invisible. So anyways, covered with plastic, which was not the greatest idea in the world. Because um, the first day I was in here, an unusual experience I had. I got the fire going, which got pretty good. It got heated up pretty nice. Um, but all the condensation from the ground, because I didn't really dry out the ground before putting the plastic on, Rose, I never seen a fog inside that thick. I mean, I can only see this close. I lost the door. I couldn't find the door. <laughs> okay, come on in. Uh, oh, somebody left me a gift. <laughs> That's nice. It's kind. <laughs> yeah, tell people they can use this when I'm not here and whatever. So, so you can see it's timber framed on the top area. That's the channel's fireplace. The channel goes that way and then straight up. That's my shelf I built recently. Until then, I had everything on the floor, which was a real drag. Oh, I can get this off my back. Then the walls here, as you can see, this time they're thick birch bark. Most of this is old wood. This is new wood okay. from the trees that were way too close to each other and killing each other off. So it was um, done in a sustainable way. And I talk to the trees when I kill them, of course. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> what tools did you use to cut the cut this wood? Everything I do by hand. I do all, no power tools. So what 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 hand tools? Um, oh, I don't have them here. I got them in the in the um, in the what do they call that thing? The wiki up. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, axe, um, drill, hand drill, um, nice big drill bits, uh, chisels. Everything you need for the um, you know timber framing. Chisels is a big thing. I don't use any chainsaws or anything like that. You know, petrol I don't p contribute to. The idea is to have like five people build it and by math, mathematically, if they're working well, they can do it in a week. The total digging, finding stuff, five people can do this in a week. The idea is to get it down to shorter and shorter time in case people realize we're out of time, man, we gotta rush this. <laughs> you know, of course you're not gonna revitalize the land fast enough, but you can at least save yourself. It's not just SIDS, unfortunately. See, a SID by itself is not going to do a lot. It's just going to help you physically survive something. But you have to make some other major changes. The whole way in which we live is ecocidal. There's not too much that we do that's not ecocidal. Society is based on exploitation and um, abuse, destruction. Not only of the earth, but of each other. Um, internally as well, individually. So there's a major healing that needs to take place. People need to heal themselves, they need to heal the earth, and they need to heal their communities. I love each other, brothers and sisters. <laughs> take care of each other. This is only one planet, we're only one people. <laughs> I need a basic message.